hurricane season, but we are getting close to the end. And the good news is with Hurricane Raphael, it's moving away from us now. So it's made its closest pass to southwest Florida, but there's rain bands staying offshore. We will track a few of those rain bands trying to sneak closer to the coast a little bit later this morning and into the afternoon. I'll show you that in just a moment. But I want to show you where those tropical storm force winds are and where the hurricane winds are. So right there, this little bubble of red, those are the hurricane force winds up to category two strength. And then you can see the extent of the tropical storm winds. And if you measure the distance from where those tropical storm winds are to let's say Collier County, Naples, comfortably offshore over 100 miles away and it will continue to continue to move farther away. Good agreement with the forecast models in the short term and then you can see a split well, they call them these spaghetti plots. But by this point in the forecast, this will be a struggling tropical system, likely a tropical storm as it runs into a lot of wind shear, some dry air, and also some slightly cooler water temperatures. So there's Hurricane Raphael and the NBC2 first alert live Doppler radar. You can see most of that rain off of our coast. But I'll be tracking some of these showers here just south of the uh, southern tip of Florida and moving across the Florida Keys. And we're gonna see if some of these can make it up closer to Marco Island. I think we will have a few showers scrape along the coast after sunrise this morning and then through the day for areas like Naples and up into the Lee County Barrier Islands. But we're really not expecting to see any severe weather out there today or any major impacts from the storm. So that's some good news. So through the morning, a spotty shower possible. It'll be breezy, very humid. You're really gonna notice that with temperatures only in the upper 70s. By midday, tracking some rain, some tropical showers near the coast, staying breezy, but rain chances around 30 to 40 percent and mainly confined to areas west of US 41. So that's where we're going to see the best opportunity for a few of those showers. And you can see that with their updated future cast. I'll have a new model, a new future cast coming up in the next half hour. But this current version shows a few of those areas of rain right up against the, co the coast. And it could come down to just a few miles, whether or not we see a downpour over Sanibel or a downpour over the Gulf of Mexico, and same thing for places like Cape Coral. So that's what we'll be watching for throughout the day. Winds coming in from east to west, blowing offshore, so we're not really concerned with any coastal flooding. Winds will gust up close to about 20 to 25 miles per hour throughout the day, definitely nothing that we can't handle. In fact, if you look at our temperatures, as we head up to the upper 80s, maybe helping to take the edge off the heat a little bit, because with humidity factored in, it's gonna be feeling like we're in the mid 90s, or several degrees above the average for this time of year. So it will be a very warm day, but some drier air comes in in the wake of Hurricane Raphael, and that allow temperatures overnight to cool off into the mid to lower 70s as we head into the morning hours tomorrow. And we'll just see the chance for a couple of isolated showers. I know we've got some Thursday night football, Thursday night lights tonight, a lot of games across Southwest Florida. I don't think weather will really be a big issue for us. As we look at the next 10 days together, couple things I want to show you. Uh, first thing is that uh, from Friday to Saturday, pretty quiet weather, but very warm weather as well. And then Sunday into Veterans Day, we'll see a little more moisture move in. So tracking the chance for a few showers, but keeping our rain chances pretty minimal at this point. And then in the long range, we're getting some signals that perhaps we could have a cold front or at least some relatively cooler and drier air moving in toward the end of next week. You can see those highs for next Friday, Saturday in the lower 80s and then morning lows making it down into the 60s. So I'll keep you updated on that. That's your NBC2 first alert forecast.